We're going to welcome back Dan Graziano. There he is. All right, so we got <laughs> Packers versus Chiefs week nine, and we obviously know the drama that's going on with the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. The question is, have the Packers front, has the Packers front office done enough to surround Rodgers with the best weapons right now in his career? I mean, I, I, I'm kind of in the minority on this. I say yes. I, I think the narrative that the Packers haven't put enough around Rodgers is false. I, I mean, he had the best offensive line in the league last year in terms of run blocking and pass blocking. Devontae Adams, you can make a case, is the best wide receiver in the league. The running back group was three deep, including Aaron Jones at the top, who's one of the best running backs in the league. Uh, they've put together a good defense. I, I just think that, I mean, Rodgers is great, and I think he elevates everyone. But I think there's this sense that he's doing it all himself, and I just don't feel like the last couple of years in Green Bay back that up. It, to me, it seems like a stacked team. And that's part of my issue with Rodgers and where he is right now, which is where are you going to go that's a better situation? Where are you going to go that gives you a better chance to win this year's Super Bowl than the team you were already on that won 13 games and went to the NFC Championship game each of the last two years? When it comes to the dynamic between Aaron Rodgers and the front office and all the sort of bad juju there, I found it interesting that his head coach, Matt LaFleur, kind of sided with Aaron in this like it wasn't necessarily an endorsement of Aaron's <laughs> well, uh, sort of takes on this matter but he certainly didn't slight him for having the disgust that he did with the front office so how does that dynamic play out in season well I think you know the, the relationship between Lafleur and Rodgers from my understanding has been very positive for both years that Lafleur has been there uh, it seems like Rodgers issue is with the GM uh, and, and I think if you're Matt Lafleur you're not necessarily throwing your GM under the bus, but you are making it clear that like, hey, I mean, if, if the end game for the Packers is to get Aaron Rodgers back, then the right place for Matt LaFleur to be publicly and privately when he talks to Aaron Rodgers is, hey, if you come back, we were working real well together. Every, you know, communication's good. You want MVP, we operated the offense at a high level, we can build on that. So yeah, if I'm the head coach in this dispute, like, the GM's going to be the bad guy on one end. Rodgers going to be the bad guy on the other end. I'm in the middle. I got to be – I got to have both guys be okay with me. But I think in terms of Rodgers and in terms of what he's saying publicly, Lafleur's in the right place in terms of, hey, we want this to work. I think we can win the Super Bowl if Aaron comes back, and I hope he does. Uh, speaking of getting to Super Bowls, I want to bring it back to week two. Chiefs visiting the Ravens. They played last season. Of course, everybody pitted is Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson. The Chiefs beat him. They beat him handily. The Ravens obviously giving Lamar Jackson a little bit of help on the outside, signing former Chief Sammy Watkins and drafting uh, Rashad Bateman. So do you think Baltimore has done enough to make themselves a challenger against Kansas City in the AFC, Dan? No question. I, I think they are. But the, the psychologically, it's been a major problem, right? Because Lamar hasn't beaten them yet. And, uh, and, and it's not that the Chiefs have been – that much better. I mean, Baltimore was as, as good a team as any two years ago when Lamar was winning uh, MVP. They didn't get a shot in the playoffs at the Chiefs because they couldn't get past Tennessee. But, you know, they've lost to them in the regular season. And, and it's been a tough hurdle for Lamar and the Ravens to get over. So they, they've got to do it before, you know, we think they can do it, right? That, that, that's the whole thing with Baltimore. But, yeah, they're, they're going to be a good enough team. Look, I think they'll be better on the line. The line had some losses last year. Ronnie Stanley going down. Marshall Yander retired. Uh, and it took a while for that offense to come together. But if you remember, late November and through December, this was as good a team as any in the league. I think they won their last five games. They kind of went roaring into the playoffs uh, and just, you know, they, they, they didn't win. But uh, I think they were, they were looking. If the regular season had gone on another two or three weeks, that might have been a division champion, the way they were going and the way Pittsburgh was going by the end of the season. Of course, Cleveland was in that mix, too. But, yeah, I think Baltimore is right there in terms of the team. You look at Buffalo, you look at Cleveland, the teams that can challenge the Chiefs in the AFC, they deserve to be counted among those without a doubt. Patrick Mahomes got beat up a little bit in the Super Bowl. It was not fun to see. A so bit. the Chiefs, just a tad, just a little bit. So the Chiefs did prioritize making sure that they're beefing up their offensive line a little bit. Do we feel like that's a big deal? Oh, huge. I mean, that, that was the whole thing, right? Because he's running around like crazy. Th this guy doesn't need a lot of time to make magic happen. And he can, you know, he can maneuver and throw on the run. We've seen it over and over again. The Chiefs line in the Super Bowl was 
completely toast. I mean, like shredded to the point where they couldn't do a, a thing. If it weren't for Mahomes being as incredible as he is, he'd probably get sacked 10 or 11 times in that game. So, you know, getting uh, Duvernay Tardif back, who took the year off to be a doctor in Canada and fight COVID, we all know that great story about him. Uh, replacing, um, you know, Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz at, at the tackle positions with, uh, you know, Orlando Brown getting coming in there from Baltimore, Kyle Long coming out of retirement. I mean, they, they have really great players on the offensive line. The only issue with that is when you put new guys together on an offensive line, sometimes it takes them a while to all kind of get on the same page and working together. I think the Chiefs' offensive line will be really good at some point this season. I think it'll probably be better in November than in September. So if you want to catch them, it might be better to catch them early in the season if you're, you know, say the Baltimore Ravens. Let's go to late in the season then. Uh, week 14, Bills, Bucks. You got the former reigning just everything of the AFC, <laughs> Tom Brady. And then you got the guy who a lot of people hope to be the reigner of everything in the AFC East in Josh Allen. Which of those two teams, in your estimation, Dan, do you believe has a better shot at getting to the Super Bowl? Oh, man. I, I think it's probably the Bucks because I think the AFC field looks more crowded at the top. Right? If you're Buffalo, you got to fight your way through your division. I think Miami looks like they're, they're on the up swing with, if Tua looks good, and the Patriots should be better. You've got Cleveland and Baltimore looking good in the north. And Pittsburgh, they don't look good, but they always seem to find a way, right? And then you look at the Chiefs, obviously, in the west. So I, th I think that's a, that's a tough – so if you're Tampa Bay, like maybe the Saints are taking a step back because of their quarterback issues. Maybe the Packers aren't what they are because of, if Rodgers isn't there – the NFC looks a little more gettable to me, but uh, Buffalo's got, I think, as good a shot as anybody in that AFC. I mean, if you look at their roster top to bottom, there is nothing not to like.